All right, so welcome to the next class. Today we are going to talk about throughput manipulation. What do we mean by throughput? Throughput What do you mean by throughput? Production, essentially production. Okay. So last time we sort of quickly went through an example, which was you know a very simple tanks in series, but it need not necessarily be tanks in series. Each of these tanks could, for example, represent a process section. Okay plant number 1, plant number 2, plant number 3 and they are connected in series so I can set the throughput at the feed to the unit or to this train. So, the feed to the train is flow controlled, then level control has to be in the direction of flow. The flow through the train is downstream and the level controllers are also oriented downstream. If you want to increase or decrease your throughput, this is the set point which your operator would adjust TPM throughput manipulator. So, the set point used to increase or decrease production is called the throughput manipulator. Yeah? The throughput manipulator is like your gas pedal in the car that is what you use to increase or decrease its speed. Usually you will have only one throughput manipulator, but there are situations where the throughput manipulator has to be shifted because some constraint went active, we will talk about that later, but the point is there is a set point that is adjusted to increase or decrease production. So, for this control system throughput manipulator is this step, the feed to the unit, right. Alternatively, I could have a situation where the customer demand is what needs to be satisfied immediately. Customer says give me more product, I have to do that immediately. Customer says give me less product, I have to do that immediately. If that is the situation, then what is happening is, I am sorry since we are doing this black, let us do it with black. Then what is happening is my throughput is set for at the product, my throughput is set at the product line. Okay. And this has been set at the product line for this is called on demand operation, on demand, demand from whom? From the customer. So, my throughput manipulator is at the product stream and then level must be controlled in what? Reverse direction of process flow. If I want to jack up or reduce the production, the set point that the operator adjusts is, is, is this guy, the TPM. Yeah? So, therefore, this is the throughput manipulator. The set point used to manipulate the throughput is the throughput manipulator. Okay? Is this the only option? No, you could also have the throughput manipulator at an intermediate stream. And let us say I could also have something which is of this type. Then level control downstream is in the direction of flow, level control upstream is in the reverse direction of flow. Yes or no? And this is my throughput manipulator. Yeah. If I want to now with such a location of the throughput manipulator, please note 
if the throughput manipulator is at an intermediate location inside your process train or the, or the process, it is not at the feed, it is not at the product, it is somewhere inside. Then upstream units must supply the set flow, downstream units must treat the set flow. The, the throughput manipulator is setting the flow to the downstream unit. So the downstream unit must treat that flow. Upstream unit must supply that set flow. Does that make sense or no? I mean, it is very straightforward, but I think it is important to understand it. So downstream unit must treat set flow or set throughput, upstream unit must do what? It must supply the set flow, but as long as you can read it once it is okay. <laughs> right? The point is there are innumerable number of options even for this simple process. You can have the throughput manipulator at any one of these process streams, feed, you know you can have it on stream 1, stream 2, stream 3 or stream 4. The throughput manipulator can be located in 4 locations, okay. And each one of these control systems would work. It will provide you effective inventory regulation, yeah. So where should we put the throughput manipulator? That is the question. Okay. That question I don't think we'll address it right now. I just want you to show the variety that you can choose the throughput manipulator wherever you want and a control system can be designed around it. Okay. By the way, this is called the radiation rule. If you look at plant wide control literature, this is called the radiation rule. The inventory control radiates outwards from the throughput manipulator location. Yeah? Does that make sense or no? It is outwardly radiating, means moving away downstream, you know, if you are going downstream. Does this radiation rule make sense to you or no? The inventory control radiate outwards from the TPM. Right? Yes or no? Yes or no? We don't understand exactly. Don't understand exactly. Yeah. So please say so. All right. So how do I explain it to you? Okay. Level controllers are oriented downstream in the direction of process flow. Level controllers are oriented in the reverse direction of flow upstream of the TPM. Yeah. So well, this is the radiation rule. If this is my TPM level inventory control radiates outwards, yeah. flow here is fixed, inventories must be moved out this way and inventories must be sucked in this way, that is the radiation rule, okay. it is referred to as the radiation rule because the orientation radiates outwards from the TPN of the level controllers. Yeah. Okay. So, this is called the radiation rule. Okay. Now, let us take another example. This was a very simple trivial example. Okay. Let us take maybe a process example. And to keep things simple, things simple, we will just stick to what we have been looking at for some time now. I will just bring in a little bit of additional complexity for more realism. A plus B goes to C. Okay. And uh, C plus B goes to D, D is the undesired product, C is the desired product. Okay. So you are putting in fresh A, you are putting in fresh B, heat is removed from the reactor, it is an exothermic reaction, reactor effluent is sent to a recycle column. What does the recycle column do? 
it recycles unreacted A and B up the top. The product and the, the heavy product and the byproduct C and D are taken down the bottoms. Yeah. And since I want to sell my product which must be nearly pure C, I send it to a product column. And what will happen in the product column is light C goes up the top. heavy D goes down the bottom. This is K B recycling. Yeah. So valves, well, what is the degree of steady state operating degrees of freedom for this process? Just by looking at the process, tell me. Exactly. You see how simple it is? No counting of equations. Steady state operating degrees of freedom for this process is A. Yeah? How many independent valves do I have on this process? Count them. What is the control degrees of freedom for this process? That's that's the question. Five plus five, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. So I've got fourteen valves. I've got eight steady state operating degrees of freedom. Eight minus fourteen is what? Six. Six valves are essentially there for. Six extra valves are there, this which, which are basically there for what? Inventory regulation. Yeah. Just like a distillation column has got five valves. Three get used for inventory control. Steady state degrees of freedom is two. Always you will have extra valves for inventory regulation, and your steady state degrees of freedom will always be, uh, you know, much much less than your number of valves that are available to you. That will always be the case. Okay. Now let's start. We've already looked at. You know, if, if pressure is the throughput manipulator, we've already looked at a control system that does that. Okay. Let us see. Uh, let us say I want an on-demand control structure. On-demand means product C rate is on demand. Okay. How would I draw that control system? So then, in that case, my throughput manipulator is what? This chart. This is my throughput manipulator. Yeah. This is my TPM. How will I manage reflux drum level control? See, reflux must be used to ensure product quality because the product has to have should not get contaminated by D because if it is contaminated, I can't sell it off. So I'm going to use the reflux to ensure D doesn't go up the top. Yeah, reflux. You know, because I I want tight product purity control. That's always one of my objectives. So yeah, we can say yeah, level control can be done using the reflux. But I would say don't do it that way. How to do it? Well, level control can be done this way. Let's see. Yeah. How will you adjust the steam inside this column? Steam to the revolver. Why that? Why that? I mean, why? I mean. Because okay, conventionally what I do is I control the level of the reflux drum using the distillate. Mm -hmm. But my distillate is the throughput manipulator. I don't have, you know, it's already been used as my throughput manipulator. It's not in my hands. Mm -hmm. Now that it is not in my hands, I can use either the reflux or the feed. Yeah. I am using the feed because I would like to use reflux for tight product purity control. Because controlling product purity is definitely required. 
tight control of product purity is almost always required. Does that make sense or no? So what I am saying is, I will be doing this from position control using reflux. Okay? I could have flipped it also level control this way and composition control using the feet. That could have also been done. I am not going to fuss whether this is right or that is right. Both are acceptable. Okay? I am not going to fuss whether it should be this way or that way. Okay? My preference is for this. That's my bias, you can call it. Okay? Now, how will I manage the steam on the revolver? What happens if I don't manipulate my steam and I keep it fixed? What will happen? Should I adjust my steam? What is the stripping section of the product column doing functionally? What function is it accomplishing? If it is not accomplishing or any function, then why the hell did I put it there? You see, it must be accomplishing some function. In what the hell is it doing? Enrich D. Huh? Enrich D. Enrich D. Well, it's the other way around. It prevents C from dropping down the bottoms. If C is dropping down the bottoms, you are going to use steam to, you are going to use reboil to boil it off. Right? Is it important? What if more C drops down? What if more C drops down? So what? So C is dropping down, let it drop down. How does it matter? Economically, Economically it won't make sense because your C production rate will go down. You could have, you are not earning money on D. In fact, you are paying a processing penalty on D. Let's say a disposal or waste disposal penalty or whatever, garbage disposal penalty. Okay? So you will be paying more because C is dropping down, but anyway you have to pay the penalty on the flow rate or on the amount of the discharge. So the discharge is more, you are going to pay more penalty. Also you are going to earn less because what could have been sent up and you would have earned money for it, now you are sending down. Right? Therefore, therefore what? You must ensure that C impurity in the bottoms does not weigh, the, you know, it doesn't become too large. Yes or no? Yes. Huh? Therefore, there has to be temperature control. Okay. I can control the temperature using the steam. Alright. The problem with that is, you see, my reaction scheme is A plus B goes to C. C plus, uh, let's say, what? C plus B goes to D. Let us say this is my reaction. So it's a sort of a series reaction scheme. Obviously, in order to suppress C is desirable, D is undesirable. In order to suppress D formation, I need to run my reactor in excess. What should be excess? Excess A. Right? So that B is limiting and therefore the side reaction will be suppressed. B concentration is as small as possible so that is small so that side reaction rate is small. Yeah? Okay. If I am doing it that way, then my selectivity would be more. That means if I am putting in 100 moles of A and 100 moles of B approximately, 95% 95, 95 of reaction would be towards C, D would be only 5%. Yeah? Yes or no? Okay, so if I then come to this column, C flow rate is about 95 kilo moles an hour, D flow rate is about what? 5. Okay? D flow rate about 5, what does it mean? That means it is a leak stream. There is a big stream coming to the column. 95% of the material is going up the top. Only 5% is dropping down the bottoms. It is a very skewed column. Most of the flow is going up the top. Very little is dropped. You know, there is a leak down the bottoms. Yes or no? Do you think you can control a level using a leak? You can if temperature is controlled, but what if the operator puts the temperature controller on, on manual? Op operators often switch on or switch off a loop. Okay? What will happen then? Then you will lose level control in the bottoms. Yeah? You don't want that to happen. So, so what? So what you do is, level control is using steam. Temperature control is using
the bottom story. Does this make sense or not? Why did I do this? Maybe it requires some explanation. If I look at the bottom of the column, this flow rate is 5 or 5 kilo moles an hour for example. What's dropping down and what's going up? The boil up. Boil up is large. Maybe it is of the order of maybe 200 kilo moles an hour. By material balance, how much is dropping down? What's the liquid flow rate? 205, right? Okay. Okay. Now 205 kilo moles an hour of liquid is flowing into the bottom. You are removing 5 kilo moles per hour of liquid. Do you think you can control level using this small leak? It doesn't make sense, right? So in the absence of any other information, you are better off to do what? To control level using the bigger stream. Which is the bigger stream? The bigger stream that's available between the two is, is the reboiler, is the boiler, is the reboiler duty. Yes or no? So I will control the level using the boiler. That leaves bottom stream for temperature control. How does this temperature controller work? Well, if the temperature is for example increasing, what does it mean? It means heavy material is accumulating at the bottoms. Yeah? So what do I do? I, because heavy material is accumulating at the bottoms, I need to open my walls so that it flows out. I open my valve, more material starts to flow out, level slowly starts to decrease and then what does the level controller do? Level is decreasing, so level controller will decrease the steam. Okay? Now that the level controller is decreasing the steam, what will happen to the temperature? Temperature will come down. Do you see what is going on? So the action of the temperature controller is nested with the level controller. If the level controller is off, you will not get good temperature control. Yes or no? So this is called a nested loop. Okay. TC nested with LC. If the level controller is off, temperature control will not be very good. Okay? The, the temperature control won't work well. In fact, it may actually just do nothing. Okay? I can also do it the other way around, which is to have temperature control this way and level control this way. As long as the temperature controller is on, I will get level control. My level will get maintained. But I must be aware that should the operator switch off the temperature controller for any reason, okay, then, then level control won't be effective. Does that make sense or no? Yes or no? So why would it not be effective? That's because my temperature controller is off. Let us say more heavy material is being put in. It's all getting accumulated down the bottoms. I'm not changing the steam, so I'm not sending it up the top. And I expect this 5 kilo mole per hour stream to take the load of taking it out. It cannot handle that load. You see what I'm saying? So this scheme will also work provided TC always on. This scheme will also work provided your temperature controller is always on, it is never switched off. If it is switched off, be aware that you might actually end up, you, you know, your bottom stream will not be able to control level. Does that make sense? Okay. Usually what happens is, operators will switch on or switch off a temperature controller or a composition controller. Okay. They usually do not switch on or switch off 
a level controller because level controller must always be on because level is non self regulatory yeah so what liven recommends is do this don't do this my personal opinion is both are okay as long as you are aware that in this case temperature controller should not be switched off because then you are likely to use lose level control okay that's about it so why did i put in this temperature controller so that too much c does not leak down the bottom because that would affect my production of that would reduce the production rate of c which is what which is what is earning me the money yes or no okay so i have set up the control system on of course this is under pressure control that is standard yeah now let's come to the column what do we do on 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 the recycling column what's the purpose of the stripping set of the stripping section in the recycle column what function is the stripping section on the recycle column accomplishing a is the lightest b is heavier c is still heavier d is the heaviest a b c d prevent the unreacted uh, prevent the unreacted what okay go with c and go ah no 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 it's not go unreacted b whichever is the light key component if if b is going up the top a being lighter than b is guaranteed to go up the top right yes or no so what the reactive uh, what the stripping section in the recycle column is doing is preventing b from leaking down the bottoms why is it necessary to prevent b from leaking down the bottoms for the reactivity because n ha sure b doesn't go come b doesn't go with c in the second yeah, yeah because any b that leaks down because it is the lightest it is guaranteed to go up the top so if too much b leaks down it is guaranteed to go up the top your product is guaranteed to be contaminated sub substandard it won't be 99.9% pure it may be just 99.9 99.5% pure because 0.5% b leaks down yeah so i must have this for tight control of b leakage down the bottom this has to be there okay usually c composition is measured you will have the impurities that are there in c in what are the impurities b and d that composition would be available for example once a shift or maybe twice a shift or maybe there is an online analyzer no matter what you will have some clue of what is the impurity level that is in my c using that data you can always com so composition control which component composition of component b you do this if you find that too much b is coming in my product what do i need to do to the temperature set point increase increase it so that b doesn't go down yeah that's the basic idea if too little b is got the going up the bottom if too little b is coming in the in, in my product let us say i am over purifying so my product it was only supposed to be 99% pure but i am making 99.5% pure product okay i am over purifying that's not a good idea why is it not a good idea it's not a good idea because i am unnecessarily using too much steam in my recycle column if i tighten the amount of b leaking down the bottoms i have to boil more yes or no so if i if my c is over pure what that means is my b leakage down the bottoms is too small if it is too small that means i am over purifying in my recycle column or that means i am using more boil up in my recycle column that's not good customer is asking 99.5% i am giving him 99.9% that 0.4% extra purity that i am giving him i am paying for it indirectly in terms of extra steam consumption yes or no so that's not a good idea so therefore this composition controller should be there if there is too little b that's going in the product what well, you need to reduce you need to increase the temperature set increase or decrease decrease the temperature set point so that some more b will leak down and your steam consumption in the column will go down yes or no 
So therefore, this composition controller makes sense. It should be there. Okay. How do I control the level in the column? The bottom level in the column? Well, again, it has to be done this way. You see what's happening? My throughput has been set at the product stream. Now, level control is in the reverse direction of flow. If you remember, oh, well, I rubbed it off. I should have not rubbed it off. If you remember my times in series process, if I am setting my throughput here, level control is this way. Yeah, same thing is happening here. Okay, so level control is this way, while pressure control as usual will be this way, level control would be this way, this would be under flow control, I want just about sufficient reflux, so that, so that what, what is the function of the rectifying section of the recycle column, what function is it serving? If it is serving no function, why then will it be put it in the first place? Preventing C from going up the top. Why is it important to prevent C from going up the top? Well, it's getting recycled, so it doesn't really matter. No, the reason is different. So it's going round and round, I pay more energy because boiling C up requires extra cost. That's reason number one. Any other reason? Reaction between B and C. If I am recycling C, reactor composition of C goes up. Yeah. What do I have for the side reaction? C plus B goes to D. I will be aiding the side reaction. Yeah. Which one of the two reasons is more critical? This reason is more critical. I don't want the side reaction. I want to suppress the side reaction as much as possible because it is the product that fetches me the money, not the side product. In fact, side product ends up penalizing me because I have to pay a disposal cost. Yeah? So it is important to ensure C does not leak up the bottom. To do that, you have sufficient reflux. If C, is, uh, C doesn't leak up the top. If C is leaking up the top, you can always increase the reflux. Okay? Yes or no? Hmm? Alright, so we have done this, now we come to the reactor. Obviously, temperature control has to be this way. Yeah? What about level control? I can control the level, let us say I do level control this way. Okay? I know that if B flow rate goes up by 10 percent, A flow rate must also, fresh A flow rate must also go up by 10 percent. That's the stoichiometry of the reaction. Side reaction is negligible, okay, or very small. Basically, one mole of A reacts with one mole of B to give one mole of C. So, therefore, what I do is I maintain A, so I have a flow controller on A, and the flow, con flow set point is come. Uh, it comes after multiplying by whatever is the fresh B flow rate. This ratio, this is a multi, I didn't draw it properly, so maybe I should do it again. This is a multiplier. You are multiplying the flow rate of B, fresh B, by some number. What is that number? That number will be about 1 in terms of moles. Moles of this and moles of that. Moles per hour of this and moles per hour of that. This ratio set point gets adjusted to do what? Will this work? Is there something still missing? More of A, maybe 1.05, 5% more A or maybe 95%, you know, 5% less A. Yeah? That will happen here, yes or no? Because I am setting the flow rate and that flow rate can be set slightly in excess or slightly slightly above or slightly below what is necessary. So either A is being, being fed in slight excess or B is being fed in slight excess. What does that mean? That excess is bound to build up in the recycle loop. How do we how did we address this last time? What we did was we did some kind of a composition control, right? 
somewhere in the recycle loop. So I am just drawing it for the sake of convenience this way. So here is, we drew a control system on a similar process where the throughput was being set at the fresh A feed. Remember that? Now we have drawn a control system for the same process at the product stream. Yeah? I can also draw a control system for this process at any intermediate process stream. Okay? Let me just do that for the sake of illustration. Okay? The point that I want to make is you are free to set the throughput anywhere. You can set it at the field, you can set it at the product, you can set it somewhere inside. Alright? And a control system can be devised around it. Here, if I increase this set point, which is called the throughput manipulator, basically what I will have is the level in the reflux drum will go down. If the level in the reflux drum goes down, I start sucking in more from the recycle column bottoms. The level in the recycle co column bottom goes down, I start sucking in from more from the reactor. And then the level in the reactor goes down and I start sucking in more A and B. Production goes up. Yeah. In the previous scheme, what was when I was setting it at the fresh feed, what happened? I increased the fresh A flow rate, level increases, more gets fed to the next column, levels in those column, in that column increases, and then more gets fed to the downstream column. You see the variability is propagated downstream. Here you are sucking. Whatever is being demanded is being supplied through the action of the inventory controllers, through the action of the level controllers. Does that make sense or not? Yeah? Ah, yes. To control the fresh input flow of A. Fresh input flow of A, yeah. Uh, that multiplier X can be through the total input of B or fresh input of B. Yeah, it could be. I have just drawn something. Okay? There are other options. I have just drawn something. The point is to illustrate that look, here I am sucking more because demand is set. If I draw a control system where my throughput manipulator is at fresh A, then I am essentially supplying downstream. Process this. This is what needs to be processed. Please process. The level controllers are essentially ensuring that. Does that make sense or no? So we will try and pull it off. So same thing. A B and let us say I want to for some reason I want my throughput manipulator to be the steam to the second column. Um, well, let me draw the valves first, then we Okay, let's say I want to set my throughput here. Why do I want to set throughput here? There can be a reason for it. For example, let us say I want to run my process at maximum boiler. Why do I want to run my process at maximum boiler? Because that maximizes the recycle flow rate. If the recycle flow rate is large, recycle is mostly A. Therefore, my excess A in the reactor is more. Therefore, side reaction gets suppressed. Okay, so I want to run my process process at max boiler. Why? Because it helps me suppress side reaction more. Okay, whatever may be the reason, I just gave you some some reason. Okay, so this is my throughput manipulator. Okay, now I want to draw a control system around it. 
I want to quickly do it without fussing too much, okay? Well, level control is this way, column temperature control is this way. You see the temperature cannot be controlled using steam now, so I am controlling it using the feed. If the temperature in the stripping section is decreasing, that means, what does that mean? Decrease the feed. Increase the feed or decrease the feed? If the temperature in the stripping section is decreasing, what would I do to the feed? Decreasing that means increase. Ah, because the feed is cold. Okay, so you need to actually decrease the feed. If you are putting in too much feed, temperature and the boil up is fixed. If you are putting in too much feed, light stuff will start going down, right? And it will start decreasing the temperature. So if the temperature is decreasing, you need to decrease the feed. Yeah? Okay, so that's what the temperature controller is doing. And of course I have the usual stuff. So mm, this is temperature control. I'll do the rest quickly because time is short and maybe you can draw it and try and understand it as to what the hell I was doing. Multiplier flow controller this sets this flow composition controller sets this ratio set point the usual pressure control well of course I can have level control this way that's possible and of course I have sufficient reflux so that C doesn't go up the top pressure control level control impurity in the product control which impurity impurity D D should go up right this is C this is D this is A this is B yeah and of course I have a temperature controller that ensures too much C doesn't go down the bottoms because that is, that fits my production of the desired product uh, of the of what is to be sold and of course and this is my throughput manipulator yeah what's happening if I jack up the throughput manipulator set point what am I doing I am increasing the boil up more material gets boiled up if more material gets boiled up level goes what the hell more material gets boiled up if more material gets boiled up the temperature inside on the tray increases to decrease that temperature I suck in more from the reactor level inside the reactor drops and then the level controller sucks in more A and B does that make sense or no? yeah that's it so upstream I am sucking more downstream I am feeding this is what is the set flow downstream I am feeding yeah the point is for any process you can set the throughput wherever you want I just gave you examples it could be that the throughput must be set at the feed because an upstream unit is dictating process so much this is the feed to you it's not in your hands an upstream process is saying processing very do you see what I'm saying another thing another scenario could be customer is saying give me this right now then we get the on demand structure that I drew another scenario could be you have sufficient tank capacity at the feed sufficient certain there is a tank farm you can suck in as much as you want and you can produce as much as you want it is going to a tank farm in that case you are free to set the throughput anywhere you want I just give you an example if you set it here for example like the boil up what you are doing is you are maximizing the recycle if you are maximizing the recycle so if I set if I set my boil up at max my recycle is max recycle is mostly A A composition inside the reactor is max site product form formation is minimized my selectivity or yield to desired product is maximized yeah so if here is a good reason to set the set the throughput here why is it a good reason we will talk about it maybe next time ok I hope what the message that you get is you can set a once you decide what is your throughput manipulator what is your gas pedal rest of the control system comes from there
can set it at the feed, you can set it at the product, you can set it somewhere inside for a good reason and then devise the control system around it. Does that make sense? So we just do three, it could have been set at the reactor also, it could have been set at, at one of the intermediate flows, let us say between column one and column two and you could still have devised a perfectly workable control system. Okay? That's the basic point. So, uh, how does this uh, affect the uh, production of C? I mean, how will that propagate to C to the next column? Meaning? I mean, suppose if I am increasing the steam, mm -hmm. what effect would it have on the production of C? See, C is getting produced inside the reactor. What yeah, C is getting produced is getting is getting produced inside the reactor. But yeah. how is it going to affect? Like for example, if I'm increasing steam, I'll be. Uh, I'm sucking. Uh, so I'm sucking in more. Uh, what should I say? More. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm putting in more A and B. So if I'm putting in more A and B, what happens locally in the reactor is the composition of A and B goes up. Huh. If composition of A and B goes up, C. production of C goes. Mm -hmm. well, the generation rate of C uh, react, uh, goes C. up. Yes, yes, yes. So, because more C is being produced, where does that C and D accumulate inside the process? It accumulates in the second column bottoms. Okay. What is the second column bottom doing? It is C and D is going down, uh -huh. A and B are going up. Hmm. Yeah. So, if more C and D are getting produced, okay. level of the bottom in the second column will, okay. after some time, not immediately, but after some time it will definitely increase. As it is increasing, your the level controller this level controller will increase the flow to the next column. Okay. Flow to the next column has increased. Ultimately, C has also increased, D has also increased. Now, does it make sense? Yeah? Okay. It's very important to think think this through. If you don't think this through, it's very likely some, some inventory somewhere is not properly accounted for. Okay? Alright, thank you.